maybe this is the case. So this is what I need to do to get better. Over the next two months, Dave stayed with the anti-anxiety medicine, but that would just make him really sleepy all the time. So that wasn't helping either. He still was weak. It just all didn't add up. I didn't improve at all. Nothing changed. I would have a shaking episode at least once a day. I could barely walk. My legs would just feel so extremely weak, like I had run for 100 miles. There were some days that he just, he stayed in the recliner and he was just too weak to really even get up or, or do anything. Over the next two months, David's muscles seemed to lose strength with every passing day. And by March, his legs are so weak, he begins using a wheelchair part of the time. Some days I could walk with the walker and I would walk very slowly. The next day I might have to use the wheelchair all day. Every day seemed different. I just end up taking on Dave's role, my role, whatever physically needed to be done. So it was really hard, but I didn't have a choice. I stopped being the husband that she had married and started being someone that was making life more difficult for her than it should be. Desperate to get his life back, David schedules an appointment with a brand new neurologist. The doctor comes in and examines me, does a neurological workup, and thought that it might be multiple sclerosis and decided to order an MRI. Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is a disease in which the nerves of the brain and spinal cord become damaged and lose their ability to control the body's muscles. I thought the MRI would give me some answers, but the results of the MRI were negative. That was frustrating. At this point, you start to wonder, are we ever gonna have an answer? To make matters worse, David increasingly feels the pressure of mounting bills. Three months after my first symptoms occurred, my short-term disability was running out. So I needed to go back to work. We needed to make sure that we would be able to keep our house. I used the wheelchair at work because there were some longer distances that I had to travel. Life in a wheelchair is different. People look at you differently. It was really hard for me. I didn't feel whole and using the wheelchair didn't help that in any way. Determined to get to the bottom of his strange condition, David seeks out second opinions. I went to two different specialists to see what was going on, and both those doctors also said it was stress. I was angry and frustrated because I didn't feel like the doctors were really listening to me. It was hard to see him this week. I've got the two kids with disabilities, and then who knows what Dave has, so it's a lot to take on. For nearly a year, this was how life was, and I started to come to terms with the fact that this is how life is gonna be for me. But just when David feels he's made peace with his incapacitating illness, he finds himself facing his worst fear. I was home alone with the kids. I was in the kitchen. I was using my walker. As I was returning to the living room, almost immediate weakness hit my body. I fell to the ground, and I tried to move my arms, I tried to move my legs, I tried to move my head, and nothing would move. At that point, I realized my whole body was paralyzed. Over the past year, a mysterious muscle weakness has been wreaking havoc on David Skinner's life it's forced him to rely on a walker and a wheelchair to get around. Now, suddenly, he's collapsed onto the floor, completely paralyzed. I couldn't move anything. I was very worried. I didn't know if I was gonna die. When I saw him on the floor, it really scared me because my mom wasn't there. That is when I was sure that he would pretty much never walk. I immediately moved the walker and then I asked him what happened, what was wrong. I asked her to help get my head up on a bench that we had to see if I could get more comfortable. I needed her assistance completely. I couldn't move a thing. I was able to speak, but it was a mumble. Sarah could understand me, but I couldn't move my mouth or lips very well. 
My dad was talking, but it wasn't really a talk. It was like when you're really tired and you're on the pillow. It sounded like that. When I walked into the kitchen, I saw my dad laying on the ground with his legs sprawled out. I thought my dad was going to die right there on the floor. I picked up the phone and I called my mom and I told her to come home immediately. I raced in the door, saw him on the ground, and called 911. So the ambulance came, got me on a stretcher, got me to the hospital as soon as possible. When we arrive at the ER, the doctor tries to do the neurological workup on me. He asks me to push my foot like I'm pushing a gas pedal, and I don't move at all. He wanted to do a muscle biopsy the next day. A muscle biopsy would show damage within the muscles that could be causing my weakness. The doctor admits David, and the test is scheduled for the next day. But the following morning, surprisingly, I was able to stand and get up out of bed and walk a little bit. I was dumbfounded. It didn't make sense to me. And they decided not to do the muscle biopsy. The doctors released him and said, we don't know what it is, but it's gone. If it happens again, bring him back in immediately. I decided the doctors aren't going to help me. I'm going to have to help myself. So I started searching on the internet. I came across the Neuromuscular Rehab Institute in Rochester, New York. I learned that they do research into lots of neurological and neuromuscular conditions. I immediately got on the phone, made an appointment, and a week later, Janice and I were on the plane to meet Dr. Chad Heatwall. When I first met David, he told me about how his symptoms would come and go, but he would explain how these events could last between uh, hours, even up to multiple days, and then resolve, which is a little bit peculiar. David and his family were frustrated, and they certainly had been through a lot up until that point. As we were talking, he actually listened. I never felt like I got that from any other doctor. So after reviewing his chart and doing a physical examination, I wanted to see how his strength was. I had David walk up and down the hallway, and what I noticed at about 20 meters, his gait started to change. Most people have a very narrow base gait. David's became wider. I certainly had a hunch about what could have caused his symptoms. So he did a blood test to confirm the results. Specifically, we were looking for a genetic mutation. The next three weeks go by with agonizing slowness as David waits for the results. We couldn't help but think about it and wonder and hope that we were going to get an answer. After three weeks, we were able to provide him with the diagnosis of hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. Hyperkalemic periodic paralysis is a genetic disorder affecting muscular control. In healthy individuals, sodium flows into muscle cells, triggering potassium to flow out. That loop, sodium in, potassium out, creates an electrical charge which activates the muscle. But in patients like David, the channel that sodium flows through doesn't close. As a result, the loop is interrupted and the muscles are paralyzed. The sodium and the potassium regulate the excitability of the muscle so that the muscle can fire. David is not able to properly regulate the flow of potassium and sodium in and out of the cell. In a normal person, the door opens for the sodium to come into uh, the cell and the potassium to go out. With patients with a mutated gene, this door cannot shut and the muscle cannot contract. Then paralysis ensues. Strange to say, but we were really relieved and excited that they finally have some answer. While doctors know that hyperkalemic periodic paralysis is caused by a defective gene, they don't know what set off the disease. It's very complicated, and we're still learning more about this disease. Typically, symptoms occur in the first decade or second decade of life. However, David's symptoms were later than most, which certainly is a mystery in his case. We had lived for a long time knowing that it wasn't stress. We finally got a diagnosis, and now I really needed to know what this is gonna do for my future. Am I ever gonna be able to walk again? 
One of the things that we've seen in hyperkalemic periodic paralysis is exercise triggering events. Any type of exercise can initially cause an elevation in potassium in the blood, which can trigger the paralytic attack. Finally, all my symptoms made sense. Every time I would exercise, I would get weaker. I've always had the mutation, but something had to trigger the mutation, so it might have been doing the yard work because that's when the symptoms started. Then, during David's first hospital stay, while he rested in bed, his body was able to restore the balance between potassium and sodium. Eventually, the kidney is able to catch up and filter some of the potassium out and return the membranes to a normal state and allow the patient to recover and regain strength. But the physical therapy was not a good idea for him as the exercise triggered his attacks. When I was thinking back on the physical therapy, I got angry and frustrated because I did what the doctor said. What they wanted me to do was making me worse. And over the next year, David was trapped in a vicious cycle. The more I sat and relaxed, the more the potassium in my body would change enough so that my muscles would become stronger again. So some days I would be able to use the walker. But again, if I overdid it physically, then I would have to use a wheelchair. In fact, had the disease progressed any further, it could have proven fatal. Without a correct diagnosis, it probably would have only been a matter of time before he would have had another significant, prolonged paralytic attack. The diaphragmatic muscles can be involved and cause respiratory failure. When he had his full body paralysis, if it affected his breathing, it could have closed off, and that absolutely would have been life-threatening. I didn't realize how much danger I was in if I had another full body episode. I was scared. There currently is not a cure for hyperkalemic periodic paralysis, but there are therapies that are actually quite good at minimizing the chance that attacks occur frequently and decreasing the severity of the attacks. We recommended that he take glucose tablets whenever he felt weakness, as glucose can reduce potassium levels and help stave off a attack of paralysis. And he certainly needs to maintain minimal amount of physical activity as it could trigger his attacks. The prognosis is I can live with this. It's not something we can fix. It's only something we can try to help control. There will be days that I will still get weak, but I should be able to live a normal life. Though they're relieved to finally have a diagnosis, David and Janice can't understand why it took nearly two years to get one. Hyperkalemic periodic paralysis is a rare, understudied, underdiagnosed condition. It's suspected that this occurs out of one out of 200,000 uh, people. We are very grateful for Dr. Heatwald. He has really opened up a whole new world for us. It's like closing a chapter that you never want to go back to. Today, David is coping with the limitations of his disease with optimism and courage. We try to live life to its fullest. I do still have episodes of weakness, typically once a week, but not near as scary as it used to be. I have to be aware of the amount of physical activity. So before I go outside to shoot baskets, I'll take some glucose tablets and that will keep me from having a weakened state but I'm back to being able to walk around, to live a normal life. I feel much more like the dad I was and the husband I was before this whole ordeal ever started. I'm really, really happy that we can finally have fun again and play, and it's really just a relief to know what he has. Our family time is back together. It's just such a blessing. I have learned that you don't take anything for granted, that everything that you're able to do, you should enjoy and embrace the experience. If you're having difficulty with the diagnosis, make sure the doctors are listening to you. There's doctors out there that will listen. Sometimes you have to work harder to find them.